For the purposes of the foundation, I, I won't get too far into the weeds of the Fed and the exact nuts and bolts of how it operates. We'll save all of that and its pertinent other history for another time. What is important to note here is that even prior to the Fed's inception, the U.S. federal government has exerted varying degrees of central control of the money supply and manipulated it for its own interests and purposes. Notably, during the Civil War, the Union created a new, lower class of currency called greenbacks to help finance the fight against the Confederacy. Now, while the U.S. has had a mix of silver standards, gold standards, no metallic standard at all, buy metallic standards, the point is, is that U.S. currency has never been a pure market choice for individuals. Today, people around the world are choosing electronic currency like Bitcoin. Now, what they choose is not the point. The choice is the point. What I'm saying is that individual consent works. Now, for now, just understand that the Fed, in concert with the government, controls the money supply, the amount of dollars currently in circulation. Think of it as uh, the Monopoly Bank, essentially. See? This thing. Yeah, that. Now, I can hear some of you bellowing, Well, the Fed is independent and part of the government. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, okay, fine. Technically, you have a point. But here's my response to that. Who, who selects the chairman of the Fed? Oh, yeah, that's right. It's the President of the United States. And, and who is it that actually created the Fed? Oh, yeah, that's right. It was a law signed by Congress in 1913. So to act like they're not in on it together is a little bit disingenuous to me. But again, l- let's not get too far bogged down in those details for now. To that point, the U.S. is far from alone in central control of its currency. China, Japan, the European Union, Mexico, Venezuela, you name it. These governments all do it. They all have the central control of their money supply. It it just so happens that Washington, D.C. is the most powerful and the biggest. So why might humans, if given the choice, prefer gold as a currency, for instance, instead of paper money? Well, first, gold has several industrial uses, like corrosion-free electrical connectors, as well as centuries-long demand in the jewelry business. But even more importantly, have you ever heard of alchemy? Until we understood chemistry, many thought you could produce gold out of thin air without mining it. Even Sir Isaac Newton spent much of his career on the false paradigm of alchemy, trying to make lead into gold. But in reality, unlike paper money, Gold cannot be simply manufactured. Gold can be mined, yes, but it cannot be created out of thin air by government decree. The long story short, historically, many people chose gold as their medium of exchange and store of value for these reasons and surely many more. According to Mr. Murray Rothbard, quote, No one prints dollars on the purely free market because there are, in fact, no dollars. There are only commodities such as wheat, cars, and gold. Now, I'm not a big date guy when it comes to history, but this one always sticks with me. On April 5th, 1933, FDR signed an executive order, quote, forbidding the hoarding of gold coin, gold bullion, and gold certificates within the continental United States. In effect, FDR, with the stroke of his pen, declared private ownership of gold illegal. With a few small exceptions, everybody was required to turn in their gold in less than four weeks. From then on, only central banks in other countries, and the Federal Reserve, of course, not private citizens, could own more than a small amount of gold. For nearly a century, a dollar had a set specific definition, which was 23.22 grains of gold which meant that an ounce of gold was worth $20.67, or about one of these guys. Similarly, other foreign currencies stood for different fixed amounts of gold, such as the British pound. Now, at first, FDR's government made good on its promise to exchange gold for $20.67 per ounce. But by 1934, the year after the executive order, FDR revalued the price to $35 an ounce meaning all the new paper money citizens had just traded for is now worth dramatically less. At this moment, the dollar ceases being 
a dollar in the traditional sense. It is now a Federal Reserve note. And its meaning is whatever the Fed and or the president happen to want it to be or say it is. However, this $35 set price remained a cornerstone of DC policy until the last vestige of an American gold standard was severed by Richard Nixon in 1971. Today, the money supply is based entirely on the whims of Fed officials. Instead of what amounted to IOUs for gold at the beginning of the 20th century, now we have paper with fancy ink printed on it. So, what's the market for an ounce of gold these days? Oh, Jiminy Jillikers, it's over $1,200. Holy crap. Woo, man. In broadcasting, that's what we call a tease. So, uh, let's unpack that in part three. I'll see you there. Woo, man.